Sisters and brothers, good evening and uh, welcome to our evening prayer. This Friday evening, the, uh, the 16th of, uh, of July. And so let's, <clears throat> let's pray as we, as we come to the end of another day that God has given us. Let us pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. And um, Psalm 143, the canticle. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. My spirit faints within me, my heart within me is desolate. I stretch out my hands to you, my soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me, my spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our collect. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions. And keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds. Raise us from death. And lead us to fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And our psalm this evening is Psalm 145. Psalm 145. a second. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. 
you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will praise, will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's a great psalm. I will extol you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. It's a commitment. It's a choice. It's a desire of the psalmist to praise the name of the Lord forever and forever. <clears throat> and so Keller's comment, meditation, he called it praise for justice. The final five psalms are all praise and joy. This teaches us that the Psalms are a miniature of our story as a whole, which will end in unbroken blessing and delight. It also teaches us that all true prayer pursued far enough becomes praise. It may take a long time or even a lifetime, but all prayer that engages God and the world as they truly are, will eventually end in praise to God. This particular psalm praises God because he guarantees justice. He cares for the poor, the hungry, the prisoner, the physically impaired, the um, soul weary, immigrant single parent he cared so much he became a helpless baby born to poor parents praise the lord and the and he calls this one brilliant love the love of god is richer than we think there is god's universal love for all he has made god also has a redeeming love for all those he saves is near in a different heightened way to all those who call on him in truth and fear him verses 18 to 19 without this saving faith we will be lost eternally verse 20 finally there is God's yearning love for all who are broken and fallen the Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down verse 14 it is a mistake to say he loves everyone uniformly or that there is anyone on earth he does not love. God's love is as beautifully and brilliantly multifaceted as a diamond. Amen. Amen. The, the, the love of God, sisters and brothers, is, is a very complex thing. You know, in fact, our love, human love, is complex. And if human love is complex, how much more God's love? I mean, we talk about love, love for husband, wife, love for child, love for parents, love for children, love for animals, love for things. I mean, love is not an easy concept. Love is not an easy to understood concept. It's multifaceted, it's multidimensional, and even God's love is even more so. And so God's love is different depending on who your God loves and how God loves. God has, uh, God has covenantal love for his special people. Then there's a love that he has for the whole world and so on. There is, it's God's love is not a simple thing. And the prayer, Lord, since it is you who feed us and you who meet our needs ordinary human labor such as farming cooking and knitting have great dignity 
They are means by which you love your creation. Help me to sense that dignity so I can do the simplest of tasks to your glory. Amen. Just a second. Okay, and our, our Bible reading from uh, Luke chapter 22, verses 1 to 13. Luke 22, verses 1 to 13. Luke 22. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray Jesus to them in the absence of a crowd. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, where will, we, where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house, the teacher says, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished, prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them and they prepared the Passover. Well then, okay. Now this particular incident in terms of the, 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 the plan, the preparation, for the Passover, you know, it's one of those incidents that we, we, we kind of pass over. <laughs> Speaking of Passover, we just sort of glide over it. And, um, and we don't pay much attention to this. But it's interesting because it itself is a little parable in itself. It's a little, it's a little miracle in itself. We don't know how Jesus prepare the, the Passover. We don't know how he arranged and organized for this upper room to be large, large upper room to be furnished and how he arranged for it. He said, you're going to go into the city, you're going to meet a man and um, say to him, uh, you're, you're going to meet a man carrying a jar of water. Which is interesting because in those days, it was mostly women who carry jars of water. And here, it's a man. And Jesus says, you're going to meet a man, and he's carrying a jar of water, which means he stands out. And you have to go to him, you have to follow him into the house, and then go to the master of the house, and, and say to him, where should we prepare? Where should we prepare? for the?" It's as if Jesus arranged all of this beforehand. He could have, but it's very likely that Jesus foreknew and knew exactly what was going to happen and so forth. And by the will of God, all of this came, all of this came into place by God's providential act. And that's the point I'm trying to make, is that all of these things were put into place by God so that the disciples found it exactly as he said. And, and this isn't brother, you, you may say, oh, it's all coincidence. Uh, you know, Jesus didn't know that that was going to happen and so forth. No, he did. And this is the point. He knew exactly what's going to happen 
and as we walk down the street he knew in in he knows exactly what's going to happen tomorrow morning as we as we step outside the door and all of that is part of the providential plan of god and of course there are there are times when we i mean we disobey god and we go in a, in a in a direction that god did not plan but because had the disciples deviated from jesus's instruction they would not have met this man carrying the jar of water and they would not have been able to get to the 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 the, the, the guest room and so forth but they had to follow jesus's words exactly obey what he says and everything was put into its place and it's a reminder to our sisters and brothers that we our lives our steps our moment by moment living are providentially guided by the hands of god and um and if we obey him if we obey his will if we walk in his word walk in his ways sisters and brothers the th the things that he plans for us will come to pass now of course the things that god plans for us will come to pass anyway even if it means that we take a detour and we get there at a um you know in a roundabout way um, and, and we go down some dead end roads uh, and, and have to turn back reverse and, and start again sometimes that's what happens in life but usually if we seek to obey Christ and follow in his ways follow in his word obey his word he will direct our steps he will guide us his hands will guide us like he guided these disciples to this room where they were going to have the Passover. They did exactly what Jesus said and they found it exactly as Jesus told them and it happened exactly as Jesus said it was happening. All because they, they were obedient to the word of Christ and did exactly what he says. That, sisters and brothers, is our lesson. Being obedient to what Christ teaches us, tells us, and, 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 and doing it obeying him and and following his plan for our lives because it is by doing this that we will find it exactly as he ordained it for us to be just as they did when they went to the upper room all right we'll stop there let's pray <clears throat> Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to the end of another day. Lord, you, you guide us with your sovereign hands in all that we do. We entrust all of it to you, Lord, because we know there are times when, because many times we are like sheep who go astray. We go wayward and we do not follow your plan. We do not follow your command. We do not obey your words as strictly as we should and many times we go off path and the plan uh, the, the the plan that you have that you've put in place for our lives uh, we do not follow that plan as 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 we ought and so lord we pray like the disciples following following the words of christ in this story we pray, Lord, that you'll help us to follow your words, to obey your words so clearly that all will be, all will fall into place and everything will be as you have ordained for our lives and for our, and for our world. And so, Lord, give us grace to trust in your sovereign hands, to guide us, to to lead us along the path that we ought to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord Jesus, as we come to the end of another day, we bring our tiredness to you. We bring our, our weariness to you. We bring our weakness to you. We bring the cares and the concerns and the, 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 the desires of our hearts. We bring our worries to you. We bring our anxieties to you. The, Lord, there's so, so much anxiety in the world. There's so much fear, especially as, as this virus and this pandemic is, seems to be um, continuing to, 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 to rage across our world and even in our own country. Lord, calm our hearts, we pray. Settle our souls, Lord, so that we will not we will not faint because of fear and dread and worry and anxiety. But oh God, help us to put our hope in Christ. Help us to put our hope in you. So that we will not be afraid of the pestilence in the day or the the evil that lurks in the darkness lord hear us we pray and give us strong hearts give us steadfast wills help us to be faithful to the call that you have given us that we will not look to the right or the left that we will not waver in our faith but help us to remain steadfast trusting in you fixing our eyes on jesus whatever we go through in this life so lord oh god we bring this day to you and we seek your rest we seek your peace we seek your grace as we sleep tonight for those for those who are working tonight, we pray, Lord, that you'll watch over them. For those in the NHS, for those who are carers, for those who work in the care sector. For those, Lord, who are looking, who are working while others are sleeping. For, for those in security, the police and, 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 and others, Lord, watch over them tonight. Give them your strength, we pray. So that in their work, they will give glory to you. Even if they do not do so, know that they are doing so. May their work bring you glory. And for those of us who are sleeping tonight, we bring our cares and concerns to you. And we ask for peaceful sleep. We ask, Lord, that you'll take away any aches or pains that may, that may hinder our sleep or take away any cares and concerns and anxieties that may hinder our sleep so that we may sleep peacefully tonight by your grace bring healing bring strength bring hope Lord to all of us tonight especially those who find their own personal situation hopeless tonight give them hope we pray that they will be able to trust you despite their individual personal circumstances. Lord, guide them through by your providential hands. You promise that you'll lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. You will not leave us there to die. And so Lord, guide your people through that valley of suffering, valley of death, valley of pain tonight that they may experience your goodness, your healing, your, your all-sufficient grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, 
For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers, from sirens and all the other noises outside and inside. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed night, one and all. <laughs>